Hello everybody, welcome back to the James Lawrence Allcott channel. I hope you guys are doing well. I realised the other day that I've stopped talking to you guys. I've stopped sitting down and talking football and talking about it from a neutral's point of view and just giving my honest opinion on stuff from what I see. I think that's a space in YouTube and it's a space that I look to fill like earlier in the year and I haven't been doing it enough. So it's an early New Year's resolution for me to get back talking about football. The podcast with Flav, we don't always get to that. So... This is a chance for me and you to have a discussion. You get in the comments and we chat about it and see see where people are at with it. Dive into the grey of different football footballing issues. And where better to start than Mikel Arteta? So if that sounds good to you, why not hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of these videos. Uh, obviously, you'll find out now if it's good or not. But if you want to see more of these videos, then hit the like button and subscribe. Mikel Arteta is now taking on a job that will be sort of life-defining for him. It's as big as that. It really is because he's had the run-up that he's wanted. 18 months ago, Unai Emery took the job and I said it was the right decision. And I stand by that. And I think Arsenal, with the information that they had at the time, I thought it was the right call. Arteta didn't have the experience of being a first-team manager. He hadn't even had the experience, really, of being around a first-team manager for long enough, in my opinion. He needed those air miles. What we now know about him at Man City is just how integral he has been to the man management of the players that are there. Raheem Sterling is a big one. Fernandinho as well. You've seen those two players really go up to the next level. If you remember those two players before, they weren't the players that they are now. Obviously, a whole pattern of play comes from Pep Guardiola. You've got a lot of money there, so you've got good players around you and that makes you better. It also makes your life a lot easier. But Raheem Sterling and Fernandinho are two players and two players at different ends of their careers. Arteta has improved and made more intelligent. And so I think that's a good starting point when you're looking at Arteta because the facts are he has not been a manager of a club yet. And that's why he shouldn't have got the job. 18 months ago. When Arsene Wenger leaves, it's going to be really difficult and you need a guy who can deal with that, who's been there before. The blind spot that we all didn't see at the time was communication. Unai Emery, it seems quite clear that he wasn't able to get that across to the players. He wasn't able to kind of interact and connect with them. And that's such a huge thing for a manager these days, in my opinion. If you look at Guardiola, the connection that he has with those players, if you look at Klopp, the connection that he has with those players. You have to be able to relate and you also needs to be that thread of respect and fear. Like, without trying to sing a song, Arsenal need a hero right now. <laughs> they do. They desperately need a hero. And they're hoping and praying that Arteta is the guy that can be that guy. Can he be that guy? I mean, he's a guy who's stunning, isn't he? I didn't even realise. Uh, you're going to see soon on my channel, I did an interview with Ted Knutson, who's the owner of Stats Bomb, who look at both behavioural metrics, but also normal metrics as well, and scout and recruit players. And it's the future of football. And and he was highlighting that communication is something that's it's low la low down in the priorities of of football clubs. And so for Arteta, this is a guy who understands the Premier League, understands the battle of it, the fight of it, the need to to be ready and have the desire to to go again and again and again. It's relentless. You had Emery coming in from two leagues that, that don't have that same pace. It's just it's just a fact. And Arteta is, you know, long time at Everton, long time at Arsenal. He steps into this job with every single element of experience needed to fit Arsenal. Except for games under his belt. Official games under his belt. Now we've seen assistant managers fail. Time and time again we've seen it go wrong. Brian Kidd's the obvious one that comes to mind. When I look at this Arsenal squad, it is lacking balance in every single way, shape and form. Be it at the age of the players, the motivation of the players and the hunger of those players. They're at different scales. You've got Ozil and David Luiz, who I'm sure are trying their best, but the hunger clearly isn't there for me. Then you look at those younger players who obviously will have the hunger, but have they got the quality and experience just yet? And then you've got some guys in the middle who probably just think they're a bit better than they actually are. So for Arteta, he's he's caught between a couple of experiences that he's had in his career that could do him a lot of good in this role. First of all, you've got Arsenal and Man City and the high quality football that they were able to play in an attacking sense. He will look to bring that to Arsenal. Has he got the players that can do that right now? I'm not sure. And he has said in his sort of philosophy in football that you need to maybe not concentrate on the opposition, but you need to be able to adapt and fit a team to, to get the best out of the best 11 players that Arsenal have got because I think the facts are at the top Pepe could he be great maybe with the right coaching Lacazette and Aubameyang 
clearly good footballers. Guendouzi for me is a cracking footballer, but there isn't a balance there. And the other side of it is, and another experience that he's had in the past, is that stability that was at Everton defensively. They were so hard to break down. They were so hard working and they had real structure. This is something that Arteta needs to bring to this Arsenal team. Let's move on to the Arsenal fans. And Arsenal fans, it must have been so tough for them because they have to drop their expectations. They've had to do that. And they've had to drop it from a point that they weren't happy with initially. With Arsene Wenger, he lost the job based around that exact fact that it wasn't good enough. So if that wasn't good enough, then where are we now with Arsenal? So the frustration for Arsenal fans has got to be huge. For Arteta and Arsenal, I think it's a good fit because there needs to be a synergy and a connection between the fans and the manager. And Arteta allows that. Even in a period when Arsenal was starting to stagnate, Arteta was one of the players that you didn't have to worry about. He's one of the players that you could trust to be a leader on the pitch to offer the quality as well. So from that point of view, he's got good credit in the bank. He's then gone away. It's probably the best thing for him that he left Arsenal to become a coach elsewhere because he has had such an education and an education with winners. So he will come in and have credit in the bank from that as well, working with Guardiola. Thirdly, I think you can tell that he has he's very stern in how he feels about things. He has a strong philosophy on things. That's why he has such a strong connection with Guardiola, because I think a lot of people would probably be intimidated by him as a coach. But I think you've seen that he can stand up to him and also put forward his own tactical thoughts. And the big thing that keeps coming up when it comes to to Arteta and if you're an Arsenal fan I think this would be the biggest thing more important than the experience is this phrase of his attention to detail seems to be a really really important strength that he's had from the start you've heard it from reports when he was taking some sessions off Arsene Wenger when he's still playing at Arsenal but also when he's been there at Man City creating goals through little things that he sees during the game and then uh, applying different tactical methods to to get Man City over the line a few times. I think actually against Arsenal, he saw something in that um, a few years ago. It might have been last year. And Benjamin Mendy was then able to get a pass back, pull a pass back through a slight tactical change that led to a goal. So these are all good signs. And I think if you're an Arsenal fan, you need something to believe in. You need something young and fresh. There are a lot of comparisons that you can have with some of the sort of injection of youth that's coming into football management now. You see it with Nagelsmann, obviously he's even been around for a while. You see it with Frank Lampard, despite them being on a tricky run. Even Pochettino a few years ago. If you can get a guy who's got strong beliefs, but the energy to to do it, then it can galvanise the whole football club. Fans, players and everyone in between. And so, for me... I think it's pretty obvious how I feel about it. I actually think Arteta is a good call. It's a brave call, but his CV is as strong as as strong as strong Arsenal could probably get, certainly with the budget that they've got right now. I think Arsenal fans need someone who's an ex-Arsenal guy in some way, shape or form, but you want someone who's not... It's not sort of just a, a, an appointment because he's one of your mates or one of the mates of the club. You want someone who's at the forefront of football and this guy is at the forefront of football. The big thing will be how much time will he be given and how bad will it get before it gets better? Because I think he's going to ask for more work rate. He's going to ask for a high level of fitness. I think there can be that excitement initially that you see with a new manager. I think you saw it with Solskjaer. But the fitness and the organisation and the footballing intelligence of these players, certainly from a defensive point of view, that's going to be a problem that's going to stick around to the end of the season. And then structurally, that's another problem that you can't totally change until you bring in new players. It'll be interesting to see if he brings in anyone in January. Um, let me know who you think Arteta should bring in in January. Think about what kind of players would fit this system. For me, to stop the flow of goals, it's got to, it's that... It's that defensive four through the centre of the pitch, be it two defensive midfielders, which they haven't been able to figure out yet. Maybe these midfield three of Torreira, Guendouzi and Xhaka can actually take on some instruction and stop leaving such a huge hole for oppositions to deal with. Because I think that is the source of a lot of the problems. Those square pegs in, in round holes is something that needs to change. But can 
can he sort of shave off the edges? Can he make these players better? Because that you're not going to be able to buy your way out of trouble with this one. So he's going to need time to develop these players. You're going to need to hope that the potential of Reese Nelson, Joe Willock, Martinelli up top. You're going to have to hope that these guys are going to come through. Where do you see Arsenal finishing at the end of this season? For me, if they hadn't got the right man... And even with Arteta, with the changes that he wants to make for the football that he's going to want to try and make, it could get worse before it gets better. It's young, it's got players who you know are not good enough to get you where you want it to be, but the young players could turn out to be players that could redefine Arsenal. So yeah, let me know what you think. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe and like and all the other shite. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.